Yesterday I visited Corfe Castle, a huge and remarkable fortress in Dorset, and today it's completely ruined. Uh, been broken to bits by Cromwell's parliamentarians following the English Civil War to put it out of military use. However, I believe that I found England's lost oubliette. If you've been following our videos for a while now, uh, we've started to look at oubliettes and hidden dungeons where basically prisoners were thrown down with no chance of getting out. The oubliette would be dark, damp, it'd be absolutely horrible. Guards would usually throw dead animals down there, diseased animals, human waste down a dungeon with no way out, just so a prisoner would suffer and also just so a prisoner would die sooner. The oubliette was somewhere you really didn't want to be. But at Corf Castle, I found the secret oubliette. So join me today as we look at Britain's lost oubliette, the secret oubliette of Corf Castle. Remember to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. The oubliette was a horrific form of torture and execution in which a prisoner would be forced into a tiny cell with no hope of getting out. The term oubliette comes from the French to forget and with this a prisoner would be thrown into a cell or prison, usually found in the dungeon of a castle, and would be left to die. It was incredibly cramped and small and was so tight that a prisoner would be forced often to spend all day in a crouched position as they would not be able to sit down or stand up and this would cause great strain and agony on their back. It would also force them to go mad, being stuck in this excruciating position for 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Those who found themselves unfortunate enough to be imprisoned inside the oubliette were starved to death and were given no or little food, with the intention of inflicting such slow suffering onto a prisoner. There was no way out, and some oubliettes were built with this in mind, with the dungeon being a bottle shape, they were literally thrown down and could not escape or climb the walls. Also on the floor sometimes were devices such as spikes which would impale a prisoner, but guards could make the ordeal inside the oubliette much worse. One of these cells was so dark at Warwick Castle that during the medieval 100 years war, the enemies of the English, the French, heard of the prison inside of Warwick. This led to French soldiers refusing to be taken prisoner for fear of being sent to the oubliette there. Guards would throw dead animals, human waste and other dreadful things inside the cell to cause horror to a prisoner. The point of this was to try and get them to succumb to their death sooner with infection and often there would be rats living inside the cell feasting off the remains of the prisoner who was once in there before. Many oubliettes have been found in castles with human remains inside of them and it was a horrific method of killing a prisoner. They would be kept in complete darkness and would send a prisoner mad by the conditions they were subject to. Some even had sewers running into them, so the prisoner would have to contend with human waste flowing directly into the cell. But there is a lost oubliette which can be found at one of England's greatest and most beautiful castles. Corf Castle is a spectacular ruin that is found in Dorset near the south coast of England. It has a rich history as a settlement, and during the Anglo-Saxon times, it was the site of the murder of one of England's kings. But the castle which became huge began its construction following the Norman invasion of England after the Battle of Hastings. Corf Castle grew into a huge and colossal fortress with a keep that stood high towering over the landscape. When you visit today you can't help but notice the dramatic ruins that overlook the area around and the castle has some incredible stories to tell. It became a royal prison very early on during its time. Okay so behind me we have Corf Castle's keep. This would have been their building filled with kitchens, loads of different bedrooms, lots of different rooms. And you can see it would have been absolutely massive. The view from the top of these rooms would have been absolutely brilliant to see. Um, you can see there's hardly anything left of it now. You can see the different arches, the different rooms as well. You can also see lots of different things on uh, the keep. For example, even where the toilets uh, system came down. Absolutely amazing. But you can see also the huge blocks of rubble, such as this behind me. Just think of the amount of gunpowder needed to cause so much damage to Corf Castle. It's absolutely crazy to think of. The three sons of William the Conqueror did not get on and each wanted to become the English king. Henry eventually became king and he spent a huge sum of money in turning Corf Castle into a huge prison and a place where kings would even find themselves incarcerated. The keep stood at 80 feet high and the fortifications around it became impenetrable. 
Many other medieval kings, such as King John, carried out further improvements to the defences and capabilities at Corfe, and this included building a state-of-the-art gloriette, a huge structure inside the castle's inner bailey, where the king could live and entertain his guests. But Corfe as it stands today was slighted following the English Civil War. It had been defended spectacularly by Lady Mary Banks for years, who managed to repel Parliament's forces, but eventually it was captured by Cromwell's men, who following the execution of King Charles I, decided to put the castle out of military use once and for all. Huge barrels of gunpowder were wheeled into Corfe, and were detonated to bring down many parts of the castle, to ensure it could never be used again by an army. The gatehouses were broken, the keep was battered, and it left Corfe Castle a site which had great importance for 600 years, a shell of its former self, with very little use as a residence. But inside one of the towers, which sits on the curtain wall of Corfe, is a very dark secret, and a very dark dungeon that has a very interesting history. The Boutavant Tower can be easily missed at Corfe. It's found next to the old hall, part of the castle which is considered to have been the oldest, and it's believed it was here where King Edward the Martyr was murdered. The Boutavant Tower sits looking at another hill, but at the bottom of this tower was a dungeon which was incredibly feared. Prisoners were thrown down a trap door in the floor and were thrown into the Ubiette at Corfe Castle. Once a prisoner was down here, there was absolutely no way of escaping. They would not have been able to climb out through any steps. The Buttervant Tower today sits half derelict, and beyond a metal grill and door, you cannot see anything but a staircase that would have taken you up or down the tower. If you would have gone up, you would have gone to the battlements and would have been able to access the curtain wall that guarded the keep, but further downstairs would have been Corfe Castle's oubliette. There are records of the horrific oubliette being used during the medieval period here in brutal ways. During the reign of King John, following his seizure of the throne after the death of his brother Richard I, he faced a great rivalry from his nephew Prince Arthur of Brittany. England owned much of France at the time, and this land was claimed by Arthur. King John took an army across and besieged a castle, and he captured Arthur and around 500 French knights, and then these knights were sent to different prisons in France and England. King John took Arthur's sister, Eleanor of Brittany, also captive, and she was imprisoned at Corfe Castle, along with 22 of her knights. Eleanor, as a royal prisoner, was kept inside Corfe in relative comfort, inside of the keep, but 22 of her guards were thrown into the oubliette, and it's believed all succumbed to starvation and died inside there. With this, we must make some assumptions about the oubliette at Corfe. Unlike a number of oubliettes, to fit 22 men inside of a dungeon, it must have been rather large, and each of these men would have been thrown into the dungeon from a trap door into the oubliette. The conditions inside here would have been very cramped, as the Buttervant Tower itself isn't the biggest, and this would have made things incredibly tough there, with overcrowding. It would most probably have been very clammy and sweaty in there too, but the knights were slowly starved to death. The story it's believed still haunts the castle, and some people say that they've heard the ghostly screams of men echoing from the walls near to this tower. The Oubliette of Corfe Castle today has been lost under slighting and damage done during the Civil War. Interestingly, in 1850, the top of the Buttervant Tower fell down, and the villagers said it sounded like the world was ending, and this was the last part of the castle to collapse, and none has fallen since. Inside of the Oubliette at Corfe, it would have been terrible for those prisoners held there, especially those knights imprisoned, who had to contend with their ultimate demise. Each one would have died one by one from starvation, and who knows the depths that these prisoners went to survive. The Oubliette today sits under a mound of earth, and is not accessible. You can see the stairs to the dungeon, which shows an eerie tease of the horror that was the Oubliette. Interestingly, I wonder if the true story of terror of the Oubliette still remains inside of the dungeon, with the remains of humans still being stuck down there. The Forgotten Oubliette of Corfe Castle is a remarkable story, which today has been lost to time, along with the stories of great suffering that happened inside the tiny cell. It was one of the worst tortures and execution methods used during the medieval and Tudor period, and today lying under a hill at Corfe is one of the darkest dungeons in history. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe, and once again, 
Thank you so much for watching.